Hey guys, Rich here from the RCNetwork.com and today we are checking out a brand new Z-Run brushless system combo from Hobbywing. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's inside of these boxes from Hobbywing. They use kind of the same outer box, but inside they can configure pretty much any combo that you can desire. But inside this box, we have the brand new XR8 Pro ESC and their brand new Generation 3 Z Run 4268 1900 KV brushless censored motor. Now, this is a true race inspired eight skill system for your eight skill buggies and various other eight skill platforms. And like I mentioned earlier, inside the box, you have the ESC box and of course the motor box. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox these two items, go over some of the specifications of these things and also compare them to a couple of other motors I have here at the RC Network and see how this new XR8 Pro goes in line with the older version, the Plus model, and also the XR8 SCT Pro and see which one's best for your application. Looking at the motor first, this is the 4268. What that number means is basically 42 millimeters in diameter and 68 millimeters in length overall. Now this is the generation three motor, so it's definitely been improved over the different generations. And I chose the 1900 KV option for off-road racing. This is pretty much the sweet spot for most of your e-buggies. This will give you plenty of torque and a lot of top end speed as well. Now inside the box, you don't get a whole lot. You do of course get the motor right there. You get a quick little owner's manual and you get two sensor wires, both a six inch and an eight inch. The new generation three motor has definitely went under the knife. The first thing I noticed was all of the kind of cutouts and cuts on the front bell of this motor. They've definitely done some lightning to the motor case. And later in this video, we'll compare this version to the generation two and see some real world weights. I see that they've added quite a few more fins going around the can for better heat dissipation. Seems to have about 50% more of those rings going around the can. They're a little bit tighter together as well. Moving around to the back side of the motor, the end bell also has some additional cutouts versus the generation two with some additional heat fins down towards the bottom just to dissipate that heat even better. Now the solder tabs have been improved. They're a little bit larger than the generation two, which is great if you plan to solder in some larger gauge wire like 12 and 10 gauge. Now taking a look at the generation three on the left and the generation two on the right, you can definitely see some differences on the end bell. Now a few more cutouts than we saw on the generation two. And of course the Hobbywing logo is upside down on the two, or at least on mine it was. Now also mentioning prior the soldering tabs, you can definitely see how much smaller the generation two is versus the generation three. And flipping it around to the front side, like I mentioned earlier, the cutouts on the front of the can of the generation three versus the generation two. Now, just to get some real world weights, we're gonna go ahead and measure in the generation two first. That's coming in at 323 grams. Now measuring the generation three, coming in at 318 grams. So a savings of about five grams. And now for the XR8 Pro. Now, prior to this, Hobbywing had two different eight scale ESCs. They had the XR8 Plus, which was a ginormous ESC capable from 2S up to 6S. Now they also had kind of like a midline ESC, the, the XR8 SCT Pro. Now that was a 2S to 4S capable ESC with a slightly smaller footprint. And it was quite honestly, one of the best bang for your bucks ESCs on the market. Now amperage wise, the plus version was rated at 150 amps continuous. And the SCT Pro was considered a 140 amp continuous ESC. Now the new XR8 Pro is considered a 200 amp ESC and it's only rated from 2S up to 4S. 
which makes me a little bit curious as to what Hobby Wing is going to do for those customers that do wish to run either 5S or 6S in an 8 skull platform. Now with the writing on the wall that the Plus model and the SCT Pro might be discontinued, I'm curious to see if they're going to come out with an XR8 Plus or Pro Plus or Max Pro and make that their new 2S to 6S capable ESC. But time will tell on that. But what are your thoughts? Put that down in the comment section. Inside the box, you do get quite a bit. Of course, the ESC right there. You do get your battery wires, which are about eight inches in length, and a nice little red marker there on the end for your positive. You do get three motor wires, all 12 gauge, that are about eight inches in length. You do get six different pieces of shrink wrap, including a red one for your positive wire, and finally, a Z-Run user manual. Now, the first thing, right when I took it out of the box, I could tell it was a quality piece. The entire thing is aluminum, so pretty much the top case, the bottom case, the whole thing is aluminum now, so definitely a quality piece. It had some heft to it, but also that coldness of the aluminum. Now, taking a quick look around the XR8 Pro, on the very front of it here, you kind of have like a dashboard, so you definitely have your fan input, you do have a port here. It's just a receiver plug for plugging in the OTA module for your programming. And then finally, you do have a port right there for your sensor wire. It's all kind of protected there and kind of out of the way like a dashboard on a car. Now moving on to the side where you actually solder your wires on, all five posts are in a row. You have your C, B, A, and your minus and plus wires for your battery. I like the fact that they put them all on one side, a lot better wiring options there. I think on the previous model, they had three on one side, two on the other. This just makes a lot more sense. They're kind of taking a lot of tones from the XR10 Pro, which is one of my favorite 10 scale ESCs. Now moving to the back side where the wires come out, you do have a capacitor bank right there with three very large capacitors kind of inset into the aluminum. So they're pretty well protected. They're also a little bit lower than the actual fan height, which is also a good thing. Now as far as the wires, there's about a four inch wire coming off with the on off switch and the set button. But what's your thoughts on the actual switch? Do you like this switch or would you rather see it kind of like the X XR10 Pro and have it mounted on the actual ESC. I'm starting to think I would like it on the ESC versus a separate wire coming out with a little setting box. But what's your opinion? Put that down in the comment section. Also with that, you do have a receiver lead coming off that's about 12 inches long, which is great for eight scale applications. And on the final side, you get lots of fins right there for heat dissipation and a good look at the fan. Slightly different fan, a little bit taller, a little bit wider diameter. It's kind of sitting right on top of those heat fins. And it does have an aluminum piece on the top just to give you some protection from things flying in there and disturbing your fan from rotating. Now on the underside, like I mentioned prior, it does have a full aluminum shell. So the bottom also is aluminum. You got some badging on there, of course, two to four S LiPo. And it does have an internal BEC now of six to 8.4 volts. So it can definitely take on some of those high voltage servos. Now looking at some of the specifications on Hobby Wing's website, it does have five built-in common profiles suitable for most eight skill racing. It has 29 built-in adjustable parameters to set various power requirements. The current firmware on the XR8 Pro can be programmed either with the OTA programmer, which is a Bluetooth module, or the LCD programming box. So you can have either or, both can program this ESC. It does have 48 degrees of boost and turbo timing. And when matched with the 4268 motor, the max speed can be promoted by 50% with the existing motor timing. It does have certain protections like low voltage protection, thermal protection, and reverse voltage protection. With the OTA programming device, you can capture temperature and RPMs, as well as some data logging features. And finally, the size stated on the Hobby Wing website is 56 millimeters by 42 millimeters by 38.6 millimeters.
Well, there you have it. A first look and unboxing of the brand new Hobbywing Z-Run system. I can't wait to get this thing actually installed in one of my vehicles, but what would you like to see it run in? I got a couple ideas, but if you have an idea which vehicle you wanna see this system run in, throw that down in the comment section. Other questions in this video, I asked, what do you think about the on-off switch? Would you wanna see that as a separate switch or would you like to see it built into the ESC? And finally, regarding the ESC, this 2S to 4S XR8 Pro. What do you think Hobbywing is gonna do for the other customers, the 5 and 6S customers? They're gonna come out with a new Max Pro unit? Throw all those answers down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But as always, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a video. Finally, my name is Rich. Thanks for watching.